Another type of combination of functions that we can have is if we take two functions and divide them. So here we are with the quotient rule. Quotient just means divide. And just like with the product rule, sadly, the derivative of two functions being divided is not just the derivative of the function on the top and the derivative of the function on the bottom. So again, we've got theorem 3, 6 here. And this is from our OpenStax book. And we've got this Leibniz notation here. That's the notation with all these d and dx's, which, which is OK. And then we've got the prime notation. And, um, I do like to write these kind of as a combination of these two notations and without the X's there just to get things a little bit more simple. So the quotient rule is that we've got our function on the top of our um, fraction F and then the function on the bottom of our fraction G and our derivative is the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top divided by the bottom function squared. And there's a lot of people that say this as sort of d high times low minus d low times high over low low. Low low is the, the bottom squared, which is a good way to think about it. Um, it's a nice way to remember it. Something that we do you need to be really, really careful with on the quotient rule is this subtraction here. That the order of the two terms on the top is really important because we've got that subtraction in the middle. Notice that the order that we wrote it on the top is the same as it's written in the, the product rule most of the time. But what's nice about the product rule is that you're adding so you can swap the order that you do those two terms in and it doesn't really matter. It makes a big difference here because we're subtracting them. So if it's so one of my tips is that I always write the product rule in the same order that we need the top of the quotient rule, because then I just kind of helps me remember the quotient rule a little bit better. So let's take again a look at an example that we don't actually need the quotient rule to do and make sure we kind of understand how this works. So when I'm saying we don't need the quotient rule for this fraction here, what we could do is split up these two terms with a denominator of x, and then we can simplify each of these. And we get x squared plus 2x. And this function we can take the derivative of, we've done this many times before, we get 2x plus 2. Now what we want to do is make sure that when we use this quotient rule, we get the same derivative. So because we kind of scrolled down here, I'll go ahead and write the quotient rule for us again. And so it's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top and then the bottom function squared. So again, this one is actually pretty nice because it's the quotient rule because it's pretty easy to tell which function is f and which function is g. The function that's on the top is f. The function that's on the bottom is our g. So our derivative, in this case, if we're using the quotient rule, let's get orange back for f, the derivative of, derivative of the top would be 3x squared plus 4x, then times our function that's on the bottom, which in this case is just x, minus the derivative of the function on the bottom. That's going to be 1 in this case because our, our function on the bottom is x, and then times the function that's on the top. Okay, and then all of this is divided by that bottom function squared. Okay, let's simplify this. So we've got a little bit of a distributive property right there. So we get 3x to the third plus 4x squared. And then we've got this minus 1 here. Maybe we will grab a different color for that. That minus 1 we need to distribute. So we get minus x cubed minus 2x squared, all divided by x squared, right? Well, simplifying the top, we've got some like terms. We are going to get 2x to the third plus 2x squared over x squared. We can do to this equation what we did up above and put each of our terms over x squared and then cancel out our x's and we get 2x plus 2. So we got the exact same thing using the quotient rule that we did using 
the power rule. And that should happen. No matter what rules of derivatives we use, as long as we're using our rules properly, we should get the same derivative no matter what. And you know, it's a little easier to see with these fractional functions why we're going to have to use the product rule a lot of times. This is kind of a, a very funny and rare case. We're going to have a lot of rational functions where we're going to have to use this product rule, or quotient rule, excuse me. So we can do a question about a table here, you know, because we may not know everything about our functions either. So we've got k of x, and it's f of x over g of x. And again, everything that we need to know about the functions f and g here are given in this table. So remembering that quotient rule, it's derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top. Oops. My notation is really bad there. I meant to write just f over g there, because that's telling me to take the derivative. There we go. And then over the bottom function squared. All right, so there's our quotient rule. So for this function here, k of x, its derivative is going to be f prime of x times g of x minus g prime of x times f of x over the function g of x squared. Now we're concerned with, in particular, g prime of 3. So g prime of 3 is going to be f prime of 3 times g of 3 minus g prime of 3 times f of 3 over g of 3 squared. So in this problem, what we really need to concern ourselves is just this column of our table that gives us our x values uh, being 3 and what all of our outputs are. So this is equal to, let's grab some different colors here, uh, f prime of 3, f prime of 3 is negative 7, times g of 3, g of 3 is 1, minus g prime of 3, g prime of 3 is 5, times f of 3, f of 3 is negative 3, and then divided by, let's go back to our red color, because we have g of 3 again, which is still 1, and we're going to have 1 squared on the bottom. And now we just need to do a little bit of arith arithmetic here, so we have negative 7 minus negative 15 over 1, so negative 7 plus 15, and we get 8.